hi guys uh welcome back to my channel uh and uh we've noticed that uh 87 percent of you who are watching are now subscribe uh still not subscribed but at least it's a movement from 91 guys please like subscribe i can't emphasize the importance please like subscribe and yeah it keeps me motivated and it keeps me producing the videos more so i request i received a request from uh one of the one of the students that i was tutoring then they said they wanted uh they wanted a, a video done on uh financial instruments so what and i'm thinking this video well the reason for making this video is for people who are doing their third year so in third year you just have to understand something regarding financial instruments so with financial instruments there's certain things that you have to understand that uh you that you're gonna encounter in the module mainly it was usually 37 or 3 but i think now they're calling it 3672 if i'm not mistaken so what you have to understand is with the financial instruments it's basically a contract right so this specific contract it creates it has a duality to it what i mean by duality it has it has the function of affecting two things at the same time right the first thing it has the ability to create a liability for one party at the same time it has an ability to create a what do you call it an asset for the other party so it becomes a financial instrument because of its ability of the duality because of the duality basically its ability to create a liability for one party and an asset for one party so basically when you're dealing on that level it's mainly an issue an issue of classification like how would you classify something that creates an asset for one side and it also goes on to create a liability for the other that was that's what really makes it a financial instrument so for example or the examples that we can come up with for instrument is like a bond when the bank issues you a bond the bank becomes the issuer right and you become like the bond what do you call it the receiver or whatever the terminology that they have so for the issuer it's an asset because you are going to be paying uh you are going to be paying them a certain amount of money per week per month or bi annually depending on the terms of your contract with them and on their on your side it's a liability the bond that i'm talking about is just a mortgage a general mortgage it's a liability that you have on your own books on your own personal books so that then is then classified as a financial instrument on those grounds so we're mainly dealing with a classification issue it's a classification issue how you're going to classify it determines how it is going to be ability asset remember it's a present when you're dealing with a present it's what do you call it it's when you're dealing with an asset you already have it now you know the definition is literally flying as i'm doing this video let's try start with the liability a liability is a present obligation from past events right which will lead or result in you losing money or an outflow of economic resources that is the definition of liability so from that definition it shows that on one party you are there's a potential or there's a possibility that you are going to be losing money because of this instrument so the instrument has a duality to it so if you're going to have to now assess whether something is going to be then classified as a financial instrument or it's not going to be classified as a financial instrument you then have to look at those components you then have to look at those components how are you going to describe what is this how are you going to recognize it in your books right remember this is a game of recognition you have to know the definition of something and you also have to know how you're going to recognize something within the financials so if you're going to be recognizing it in a certain manner it's difficult for you you have to know like the characteristics of what you're dealing with in order for you to recognize it properly so if you now are dealing with a financial lab if, if it's a financial instrument please don't forget there's a duality to it for one party it's an asset for the other it's a liability so we have things like leases right for one party the contract creates a, 
uh, asset for one party, a liability for the other. Straight off the bat. You have your bonds, you have your debentures, right? What is a debenture? Uh, you are offering, remember, a company will be looking for funds. Say a company is looking for funds, right? So if the company is then going to be looking for funds, they can make an appeal to the public and say, uh, if you guys are going to give us certain certain amount, probably a thousand rand, ten thousand rand, or a hundred thousand worth of debentures and stuff, we are going to pay you back your money with an interest at a certain period of time. So basically, you are creating a relationship with them. So according to the company, the debenture becomes a liability. It is an option that companies usually opt for because they don't want to issue shares, but they still want to generate money. With shares, there's a lot of... Uh, what happens with shares? There's a lot of ownership items that happen with shares, but they're a good vehicle of using issuing shares to uh, generate money for future projects. But with shares, the problem with shares is the moment someone is now a shareholder, they are now a co-owner of the company. So in order for the companies to deviate from that, they now have this thing, they have this vehicle which is called debentures. They issue these debentures which come with a face value. And when they issue these debentures, they are issued to the public so that the public can then apply for those debentures. Then at the end of a certain term, they're going to uh, gain back the money that they invested in the debenture plus interest. So a debenture then becomes a financial instrument on the sense that it creates a liability for the company. At the same time, it creates an asset for the order or the debenture order. Is they'll be holding it, enjoying interest, interest, probably for a period of two, three years. They'll be just enjoying the interest. Then at the end, then they are paid back the amount that they had previously invested in the company. So basically, that's it about uh, thingy, financial instruments. You just have to be able to know and understand what you're dealing with. They usually loiter around debentures. They usually loiter around what else. It's mainly debentures, leases, and all those things. But you should be at a point where you can easily, easily identify these things. It's not so complicated. It's not a complicated subject, but you just have to be a bit more diligent and understand that more is required from you. On disclosure basis, more is going to be uh, required from you. So thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. Remember, like, subscribe, like, subscribe. Thank you.